you can be forgiven and, and actually change course and say like, you know what? I was under a, I was under a strange delusion and I caused a lot of harm. And I see that now and shift. And if we don't hold that story about people, it's not possible. Then there's no chance. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't hold that story, then the only chance is that good overcomes evil in pitched battle. Yeah. But you know, evil is better at battle. (laughs) The only way, the only way that it changes is if some of whom we considered evil stop doing what they're doing. Yeah. Or they, they stop doing it so efficiently because they have doubts. You know, and maybe they still go to work in their corporate office and, and, and they, but they start to go through the motions Mm -hmm. instead of to really aggressively, Mm -hmm. uh, develop new, you know, lithium mines, Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're just not efficient anymore. They're half-hearted in their advocacy of the policies. Maybe they don't have the courage to step out and say, no, this is wrong. Yeah. But there's something stirring within them, a, a, a protest. even. Uh, to a certain extent, addiction, depression, mental illness is a form of protest. Mm-hmm. It says it, it, it's it's that your your being is not unified in its expression. Mm-hmm. Some part of me does not want to do what the rest of me is doing. So that can manifest as procrastination. A lot of what we see is the problem or the illness is actually health seeking to express itself. Yeah. And so I think that that's a much more realistic formula for change that, you know, people have a change of heart. And then the question is, okay, how do we create conditions for a change of heart? Yeah. One of the things you pointed out, you know, I was obviously a massive fan of Avatar 1. Yeah. Right. And, And you actually pointed out, you're like, yeah, but it's it's telling a story that's actually not helpful. And the yeah. story is that the animals are going to come together and the people with the bows are going to come together and yeah. they're going to defeat the destruction bomb machines right. by some act of they're AWOL. They're going to defeat the machine guns with their spears, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like this, this romanticized idea of good overcoming evil in pitched battle from sheer... And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, like the warrior spirit and the connection to AWOL. There's a lot of beauty in that as well and heroism and romanticism. But I actually saw that and I was like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's actually telling the wrong story. And then I watched Avatar 2. I don't know. Did you see Avatar 2? No, I was uh, forewarned. But they just doubled down on, right. uh, on that same mentality. And I was like, man, what a miss. Yeah. You know, what a miss. What a miss that they couldn't convince the whalers that these beautiful creatures that they were whaling were like, were as sentient and magical and important as they yeah. were. And like, Instead, they had to they had to sink the ships and slaughter the right. slaughter the people. Like yeah. it's it's just not. Yeah, the, the film just in, encourages us to think the problem is these horrible people. Right now, what happens when that is applied to foreign policy? War, war, and 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 the the whole machinery and agenda of war. That's like the 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 spiritual and philosophical basis for the neocon long game of first destabilizing and destroying Iran, then Russia, then China. I mean, they've, they've, they wrote about these plans 30 years ago and have been executing it step by step. Mm-hmm. Not with a lot of success, but, you know... That hasn't stopped them from trying. Hasn't stopped them from trying. And, you know, the, it, it, I mean, it could escalate into nuclear conflict. And that, in their... Like, I can understand it from their view... It's the, what I just described. To understand a situation, first identify who's the evil and who's the good. Once you've started with that, okay, you're always the good, right? You're never evil. Mm-hmm. So it's whoever stands in the way of your domination, they're evil because your domination is good because mm-hmm. you're the good guy. <laughs> so the more power you have, the better for everybody. Yeah. Because Problem the is good everybody guy. thinks they're the good guy. Well, everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that mindset leads inevitably to polarization. Right. And that mindset it ultimately comes from a faulty view of the human being, mm-hmm. which is in Christianity in the form of original sin, that you are fundamentally evil. It's in biology in the, in the idea of a selfish gene that, you know, at bottom, everybody is just seeking to maximize their reproductive self-interest. It's woven deep into the meta-religion of our time which encompasses what we call religion as well as science. Mm -hmm. It's a very deep mindset 
It's the mindset of conquest. And so everything we're seeing in, in global affairs today and in domestic politics, this widening division and intensifying polarization all comes from what you might call a spiritual error or a spiritual um, journey that we've taken into separation. Mm -hmm. And so when you ask, like, what, what does a Kennedy administration look like? For it to even happen or for it to be anything that I would support, it has to tap into this transition into a story where we no longer hold each other in that way. Mm -hmm. It's just what we were talking about to, to see something else and to be able to stand in that on behalf of our fellows and to receive their holding of us because it, it, it is so uh, insidious. You know, like I, I, I don't know if you've had these moments where, where like <laughs> I look at my the choices I made in life. And it seems like every single one of them was selfish. Maybe I was pretending to be loving and generous and something, but I was actually on some level calculating what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. And, and when I'm, when I'm in that mindset, it seems so inarguably true. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm just like, like, wow, I'm like the, the most evil human being in the world, you know, <laughs> and too cowardly to actually like commit <laughs> acts of murder and mayhem, Yeah, you know, like real psychopaths, you know? So I'm like evil and a coward at the same time. And it, and it becomes this totalizing reality mm -hmm. that, that usually it's, it's only when an act of love pierces that. Yeah. And when somebody sees my beauty and my love, then it, then it reminds me it, it ignites my own knowledge that I too am a divine being. Yeah. That's what we have to do for each other. And I don't think that anything less than this kind of revolution will be enough to motivate a new politics.